Hello and welcome to episode 47. My name is Meg and I will be your host. This is the Babble of Girl Sits Knits podcast. And um, I am almost at 50. This is insane. I if you are a new viewer, welcome to the crazy. And if you are a returning viewer, welcome back. Uh, always happy to have you, to hear you in the comments below, to receive your pictures, your hashtags, all of it. So it's been absolutely wonderful. Uh, today I am drinking Dunkin' Donuts pumpkin latte for the fall season that is not here yet. It was 87 degrees yesterday. 87. That's hot. If you're a Celsius person, that's hot. 87 is too warm for fall, too warm for wearing your knitwear. Mm. It's terrible. So I am willing the uh, fall season to get here by doing some fall things, some fall crafts, some fall drinks, and just, you know, in my head, October 1st, I will wake up, there will be a chill in the air, and I will be able to put on boots again. Uh, just a few things that we are covering to start. I'm hosting a knit along right now with my friend Hannah, who is um, from the Crafty Chat podcast in the corner of Craft on Etsy. And uh, we're doing a vintage sweater along right now, which have to pull out my whip to show you. It doesn't look any different, but I'm just going to let you know that is the next thing I'm going to work on. Uh, next up is going to be with Cassie, who is the raspberry knitter, and that is a um, bucket list sweater cow. All right, and um, a third thing, uh, my friend Ash from the Vessel Yarn Co., who has donated a prize on the podcast already, so you've heard of her. Um, she is hosting an Autumn Along, which she asked me to co-host, but it's just been way too crazy, and I politely declined and um, wished her the best of luck, but I did say that I would mention it on the podcast just to get the word out, so this is an Autumn Along from the first to the last day of fall, which is just fantastic. I know a lot of people are doing different, like, cows and stuff right now, so... Um, Generally, everyone's really accepting of double dipping, so you can get one thing in a lot of different um, cows. So anyway, just sharing that along, and uh, that'll be the administrati bits of the uh, episode. I have picked the two Instagram winners, and yes, they both got back to me. I'm having a problem with my stamps account right now, so I'm calling in today, and I'm going to get it sorted, and then I'll be able to print your postage. So sorry for the wait. Um, and after that, just moving right into FOs, of which I have one, and it is probably not the one that you thought it would be. If you're guessing that it's the pavement sweater, you're wrong. This little guy, if you follow me on Instagram, which you can find me in the links down below, <laughs> always forget to say that, um, is by Lali Lala Designs, and um, this is Erwin the Acorn right like can you look at him little sweetie so this was um, one of my first amigurumis in a really long time uh, when I first learned to crochet I did make a doll I made a Coraline of myself so she had you know like the little chopped hair and everything that I did um, but this is Erwin the acorn and Irwin is made out of Knit Picks Hawthorn in the fawn colorway and the conifer? Yeah, conifer colorways. Um, and I kind of did the hat a little bit different than was called for. It does not come off. It's part of the pattern. But I did create kind of like a little lip on there so that it looked like he was wearing a hat. I don't know if I'd do it again, but... Um, in making it for a baby, I probably would tack either a side or a, the back of the acorn hat on so that they don't lose it. Because after the, after they lose it, it's done. You know, you can't usually find things. Um, this is stuffed with polyfill. It was worked on a, and I used a Susan's bait, so it's a like a a bright blue needle, and I want to say it was a two. Yeah, two millimeter. I started at a two and a half, and it was good, but I thought maybe my stitches could get a little tighter, so I went down to a two, and I used um, safety eyes, which I'll be sharing with you in a little bit. So once again, Irwin, the acorn, he looks like this. Do a little 360 for us, Irwin. 
<laughs> um, I think he's so sweet. I can't wait to gift him. He is going to be going to um, either Liam or Declan, which are um, two opposite friends, babies. I'm going to make another acorn to send to the other baby, so it'll be even. Um, neither of them watch this podcast, so I'm not worried. But oh my word, how cute is he? Squish, 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 squish. Oh, I love it. I love it so much. So, um, done a lot of purchasing on Lally Lala this week um, because I had Dirk the Dragon and then I was having so much trouble with the rounds and everything. Um, this I whipped up in one afternoon, afternoon to evening. So I started at say like two and I worked a little bit and then I stopped and I went to go get Pat and I made dinner and ate dinner and then I worked on it again and I finished it at like eight, nine o'clock at night. So it was a one, one day project, even being on fingering weight yarn. Um, and this is an 80-20 of um, poly polyamid and uh, highland wool. So um, yeah, he's sturdy and he's machine wash cold. So I figured for babies, gotta have something that's washable. But I just thought he would find him so sweet. And I'm not sure which baby it's gonna go to yet, but I'm gonna make another one. Maybe I'll make an identical one and I'll send it off to the other one so they have like twin, little twin acorns. Little twin acorns, oh my word, I just, I can't. I have so much fun with this. So um, I'm already like picturing in my head what ones I wanna make and keep for myself and then like what ones I'm gonna make and gift away, especially with a one day project like that. Like that's pretty awesome. So. Little Erwin. Oh, so cute. These little feet just kill me. I love it. Uh, so yes, I mean, I guess that's enough about that. You can find these patterns on Ravelry. Um, they're about six bucks for me. And uh, for this, you get three different patterns and it has a ton of information. Um, she tries to be very clear with like which stitch you're working into, like the back or the front, or if it's this or that. Like she, she really does give you a lot of information for $6 in these three different completely, you know, like they start out with the same kind of feet, I think, but then they just do different things. Living in my Molly Klein design Ursula bag, which she um, made me kind of on request, is my pavement sweater. I finished the body and I started the sleeves. I was and um, we both agreed that it needed blocking and it needed to be soaked. Um, it's a little short when I just put it on, but like even smoothing it out, it was getting better. So um, this is turning out really well. I need about 11 inches on the arms and that's how much I have done so far. Really not too bad. Um, what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna try this thing. So right. can you see that stitch marker down here? Okay, that's about what I have left to do. Not bad. Um, we are driving up to Philly this weekend, so I'm thinking we're gonna take this and a pair of socks, and that will be my trip knitting. I'd love to get the sleeves done and then throw it in, in the wash. <laughs> Throw it in the wash, it'll be grand. And um, throw it onto the blocking mat Sunday night so that possibly Monday morning, I could, you know, say bollocks to the weather and go in a sweater because I want to. Um, but that's all I have left to do on the sleeves. And uh, then the pavement number two is done. This is Malabrigo in the Chukri colorway. Uh, so far, this is only two skeins. I have this, I have this much left of the first ball. I tried to work as much as possible into the sleeves. And then um, I have this much left of the second ball. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see how long it takes to almost run this out and then kind of debate if I have to crack into the third. I have a whole skein to finish the just the sleeves, I know. And then I feel like it's kind of a waste because I just needed the sleeves. So annoying, but it's a beautiful skein. I'm sure I'm going to want to use it at some point for something, um, but there it is. My pavement sweater by Vera Valimaki. Um, this will be my second one. I am very excited to get this off the needles so I can wear it because it's just super pretty. 
I'm working this on a Chiagu size six. Um, day one, I got like maybe like that much done, and the next day I got like that much done, and then the third day I got like three rows done, four rows, five rows, five rows done. So like, and then I I put this down. I did like five rows on this, and then made it Irwin in one day. So I could have had this done, I'm sure, if I had um, not made Irwin, but really like having an FO and I don't know I just prioritized oddly so this one's gonna be going downstairs with me right away because I'm definitely gonna be working on it um, next I kind of think um, I might have gotten two rows done just to show you again because I think they're so pretty um, the fancy feet color of the yarn jar and I have made an official decision to use Dewberry in the heels and cuffs. And I think I'm actually going to just cut the toes and use Dewberry on the toes too. I think I'm going to cut these toes off. I've just decided I'm not a fan of that color anymore. That's all. So um, the nice part about understanding afterthought heels is not being afraid to chop your knitting up. So... Um, I'm just going to insert my needles in the front, in the front, in the back, in the back, chop off the toes and re-knit them. And I'll simply use like an afterthought heel pattern. It's like afterthought everything sucks, except I didn't knit them all in one. So these might go with me. Um, then my dad's socks are in the same spot. I won't show them to you, but they're still in the needles. Um, okay. This was the yarn that I talked about on the last podcast. Podcast. Do, 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 do. Pretty, pretty. I think it's a Regia. Pretty sure. Yeah, pretty sure, yeah. All right, and so I got um, quite a bit done. Uh, this is... There we go. That's how it's knitting up, which is absolutely stunning in my opinion. The blue is making my heart sing. It's so stunning. Um, these are super wooly, so I do have to kind of like soak my hands in moisturizer after I use them. They kind of dry out my hands, but not too bad to work with. Like I, they're they're doable. They're definitely doable. Um, and I to kind of pump me along. I am using a pumpkin pie stitch marker by Simply Serving. Little guy, isn't he sweet? He has like graham cracker crust and oh, the orange just looks so pretty with the little pops of orange and blue and orange are complementary colors. There's your art lesson for today. Um, and I absolutely adore Lindsay's Charms. They're nice and light, so this is not pulling on my stitches at all. If you're worried about the size of the charm, if that was something that's holding you back, don't. The, it, it will be just fine. So these are turning out really nice. I am going to be using them as an anniversary gift for Pat because I will not get his sweater done in the meantime. Um, I was watching Vilvine's Yarngasm, Kristen's, there you go, Kristen's podcast this morning as I was packing yarn to take out, and she mentioned New Norwegian purling. Um, you purl from the back, and I'm thinking maybe that would help the way, see if I'm gonna purl, I would um, set up my yarn here, and I would go, I would flick it like, like this, in the front so I'm like I keep losing it because I don't actually have anything to hook it on but that's how I would purl and this is where I'm getting the pain right there because of this grip I've got on like I'm doing like this with my thumb basically and that is kind of painful and I'm not sure if that's just me if I'm doing it wrong um, so a few of you commented down below before I hope showing you that mini thing. Ooh, forgot I had the thing. I love seeing, I love seeing it on there. So um, I have done about that much. Obviously I've got quite a bit to go. 
the ankle bone and the sock heel line. So this is one heel line, this is another heel line. So I think right about in between is going to be the one I'm going to use um, to make his afterthought heel. I've debated doing it in orange, an orange afterthought heel. But it's super cute. And I'm really enjoying them. So that's about how much more I have to do. Quite a bit. Uh, since we're kind of coming up on anniversary, actually, maybe I should take these, these and my pavement sweater with me, and I will knit, 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 knit in the car this weekend. I have it in the science bag by Stitching Plaza because he's a scientist, and even the, you know, teal, teal, and the orange with the white pop, I just couldn't resist. The yarn and the socks match so well. So yes, actually those will be the two. Thanks for helping me decide. Uh, next up um, is from Stitching You Bags, and these are Halloween socks. Now, I have also put a Dementor on my bag here. He is a Pop Dementor, and he is um, from Amazon. And I put one of my new pins on there as well which is really fun. This is one of my favorite bags. That inside fabric is just so pretty. And I bought this for myself last year. Now, um, this is the orange that I thought I might use for Patrick's heels. It is a hand wash, which I hand wash all the socks, so that's not a problem. It's a hand wash, knit picks um, palette in like an orange. I think it's pumpkin or orange color. Um, and I, uh, cheekily bought a few things from the yarn chart because kind of addicted um and this is her halloween color i had a similar color palette last year sanderson sisters by hyverlin yarns and um i absolutely adore those socks i still wear them all the time but i figured a new halloween sock this is this is the sport weight, I want to say, for her shop. I'm going to say it's a sport weight. Usually I get the 80-20, but I think this is the sport weight. And I have put another Progress Keeper from Lindsay on there. It is the potions bottle. Kind of reminds me of something from Nightmare Before Christmas. And um, I got to say, I just love the way that this little jar has, like, speckles in it. Can you see that? Yeah. It's so cool. So um, this is how far I got in one night. I think this was Tuesday night. Yeah, I had a really bad, my last class was uh, Monday. I had a really bad afternoon on Monday with the kids. And um, I came home and these skeins were in the mail. It made me feel a lot better. So I'm gonna move my progress keeper up to where I'm leaving you now. Ta-da! And uh, I'm, I'm very tempted to take these. I'm just about to start the green on both of them. So I almost got through a full repeat because uh, there's the black, there's the black, and all the other colors match. So really the only color I'm missing is the green. Um, so you can almost see the whole repeat here. But yeah, I, um, I really love it. It's great yarn. It's great fun. These are on a US 2. US 2, which is 2.5, 2.5 millimeter. And I am working across 20, 25. I'm working on a 50 stitch sock um, and lots to give. Uh, so not worried at all. They fit quite well. I am absolutely enjoying them. They're super Halloween socks right now. So I'm very excited to see that lime green pop right in there. I think it's gonna just make it for the pattern and um matches my bag really well i'm just having i i kind of like you know said whatever and just cast them on because i felt like it so some halloween socks on the go and oh we did it <laughs> that's all the whips all right that is going to move me right into mr postman Oh yes, wait a minute, Mr. Bowman. Wait, wait, hey, 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 Mr. Bowman. 
So my first Mr. Postman actually came in last Friday after I had podcasted. Um, Pat and I went to go check the mail um, after my mom and grandma had come and we we're all sitting around kind of debating how we were going to do dinner and um, I got this package and I, I knew the package was coming because I had given my address and this was from um, my friend who I had met via Tyranny's um, knit nights that she used to do and uh, this is Robert and he's he's super active in lots of different uh, knit groups so it's awesome um, this is also the same person that I talked about that knit the lace weight ice cream shawl for his wife which I just thought was like the sweetest thing in the whole world um, so he turned out to be one of the test knitters for skein deer knits and what's hysterical is I looked at this pattern like this project page after the pattern had been released and I like looked through all of the different examples that people had done and I saw these like I looked at them and the name I didn't even read who made them it I didn't even read it I don't know how this didn't I don't know like I just looked at the pictures I just looked at the pictures that was it <laughs> just laughing at myself now because I feel like an idiot um so he had asked my glove size like for you know like a month or two ago and I was like I don't know I guess I'm like a small medium women's like I have kind of tiny hands like that kind of thing and he was like okay thanks and like I that was it like I didn't think of anything else about it um so he got the pattern from Skein Deer Nets who is Ellie and um, she's adorable and fantastic at this whole color work thing, which I am absolute rubbish at right now. Um, but I do plan on practicing and practicing will make me better. I am blown away. I'm absolutely blown away. I'm just like waving these around like crazy, but I'm absolutely blown away by these. Um, he is a fantastic color work knitter. This is Louette Gems yarn in the fingering on a US 2, I believe, if I read his pattern page correctly. Um, look at how gorgeous. Like, if you're debating on getting this pattern, do it! <laughs> do it now! Pause this! Go to Ravelry! Get it! Oh my word, look at that! Look at that. And she calls them cheeky little pumpkins on the gusset. And it is, it's the most adorable cheeky little pumpkin on the gusset. I can't, I can't even, I'm just like, and they fit like a glove. I know, but they do, they fit perfectly. And for not having ever actually measured my hands or personally met me where you could like gauge, he picked the perfect size for these. Um, and I'm gonna have to check his Ravelry page again for what pattern, for what size he made, because if I ever do Ellie's patterns, I'm gonna, you know, be able to gauge the one perfectly. Like, it is perfectly at the top of my finger, like, perfectly at the edge of my index here. Like, I am not wanting for room, and I have no floppy tips. This is amazing. And uh, the ribbing, look at how gorgeous the ribbing is because that is gonna go all the way inside my coat and I'm not gonna have like freezing cold arm. Guys, <laughs> how do you say thank you for a gift that took this much time, this much effort? I, it's stunning. Um, Robert, I can't say enough nice things about your color work and um, your kindness for sending these to me. I'm blown away. I'm beyond grateful. I just, I, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. Um, they're beautiful. Thank you. I am going to love these all winter. Guaranteed you guys are going to see pictures of me. I promise I'll take a picture when I'm not actually driving, but basically like I'm going to wear them into work every day. So it's going to be a ton of pictures of me and my gloves, just <laughs> type of thing. <laughs> It's going to be awesome. I'm so excited. Just ah, so cool. <laughs> I, I, I'm at a loss for words <laughs> at how amazing these are. 
and I just couldn't be more grateful. Um, again, if you are considering making this pattern and you haven't made the leap yet, don't be afraid. I've heard that Ellie pretty much just holds your hand throughout the pattern. She writes everything really well. The charts are, if you know how to chart read, the charts are easy enough to read. You know, boxes this color, boxes that color, and you choose. And you can make them two of the same, like light with the dark or dark with the light. You could do both the same or you could do one in one. Um, as you see here, I am so torn. I don't know what I would have done. I don't know if I would have done them both like this or both like that. I don't know. <laughs> like, ah, I'm completely torn. They're stunning. Um, do one more close up here and the side. Look at that, even the insides. Oh my word, like. Can you, can you? So again, if I haven't mentioned, these are the pumpkin spice latte mittens um, or pumpkin spice mittens by Skein Deer Knits. Uh, she's on Ravelry. Oh my word, okay. These are, this is gonna be the mitten show because <laughs> I don't wanna take them off, but I have to, to be able to pick up other things, so. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I could not be more grateful. You could not have picked a more grateful and excited person to have these. My grandma was absolutely astounded. She was like holding them and like, she's like, how do they do this? My mom's like flipping it inside out and she's like, I don't understand. I don't, I don't understand. And I'm like, well, see, like you, you knit like, like four brown and then one green and then three brown and then one, and she's like, no. No. <laughs> so uh, I don't think mitten knitting is in her future right now, but she had a high appreciation of these stunning, gorgeous mittens, and um, so do I. So do I. Uh, they are going to be a staple in my fall wardrobe, for sure. They're warm. Um, the I find the Louette Gem yarn is um, warm. It feels wooly, but it also does not feel scratchy, which I appreciate. Um, you know, I'm able to like touch it against my neck and not be like scratching right away. It feels just fine on my hands. Um, you know, I haven't had any redness or anything like that anytime I've, I, I haven't worn them officially since 87 degrees, but um, you know, I, I don't have any rashing on my hands because of the wool being too scratchy. Um, this ribbing is absolutely perfect. I want to say it's about three and a half inches of ribbing, and uh, if you would like to copy that, I would recommend it. I'm not sure of the cast on, um, but it's nice and stretchy, uh, but not so stretchy that it will not grip my wrist. It's just, they're perfect. They're That's how they're going to sit now. All right, moving right along. Um, I'm going to save Unbox It for a hot minute. Um, I also got one more skein from the yarn jar, uh, and I want to get this right. This is Vintage Christmas. I believe I saw, who was it? It might have been Lindsay from Simply Serving knit these up, and I kind of changed my mind about them in that moment. Seeing them knit up with that nice white heel and cuff. I don't know, something just flipped in my head and I was like, you know what, no, I do like that. I do want them. Cause I, I passed on it the first round that I bought. So I'm gonna add this to my yarn jar. I don't know if you can see it. Where's the bulldog? Bulldog's here. Oh, the jar's back here. You can't see it. Um, I have all my skeins in one little, one little area. So I'm able to find them pretty quickly. Speaking of Lindsay, I got a little box of stuff. Um, I'm gonna take out my pins. I wanna show you my pins, but I will pause for a hot second there. Um, my favorite so, so far has been zombie coffee. It has some brains in the coffee. So cute. This is a heart chocolate waffle with coffee, which is probably one of my favorite decadent breakfasts. 
Like if I, uh, if I get a good workout in, that's a breakfast I would definitely like to treat myself Here, to. I saw that purple bat and I was like, give me that bat. I need it. Look how sweet it is. Oh, it's so cute. I love it. Able to trade for a butter beer, which should go on something pumpkins themed soon. I love it. And lastly in this box is going to be a pumpkin with gold leaf eyes and gold leaf on top. So cute. Look at that pumpkin. Um, zombie coffee right now has been uh, hysterically my favorite. <laughs> I can't. Uh, it's really cute. I think I want to make a zombie lally lala, but I want to base it off of this like camo green and like maybe give it little brown or black shorts and just give it the pink brain, but like do the first row in red. I don't know, it sounds so gross when I say it, but I think it would be so cute. So I'm working on that and I, I have my little box here which will now get put into my um, complete box of Lindsay's things. Um, next up, I, oops, sorry, just wanted to show you really quick. This is the Bad Wolf Girl Studios pin. I wanna say this is the one and a quarter or one and a half. Right now in the shop I have it down as 1.25, but I think it might be larger. Once I've seen it, I will, um, I can check my order form again. And then this is definitely the one inch. I'm positive about that. So um, they come in two sizes. I, would, I had to make them cost 20 cents because you're not allowed to put something up for nothing. Um, so, I just put it in and then made it free shipping and asked um, in the comment section that you add it to an order so that I can ship it with the order and then I can reimburse you your 20 cents if you would like. Um, if not, I will just put it right into buying more pins and putting more pins in the shop. Um, other than that, I uh, am sending a pin out with every uh, kit that I sent out. So all of the Corpse Ride kits that went out had pins with them. All of the Coralines will have pins and all of the um, Pumpkin King will have pins. If you've already gotten one or two pins and you're like, dude, I'm tapped out, don't send me another pin, um, please just write that in the little checkout thing. You can always um, check out quickly to reserve your spot and then message me afterwards. And I can just simply make note of that for you. The most recent thing that I have learned is that a hot coffee warmer so, uh, works on these. It doesn't burn the paper on the bottom, but it keeps the beverage inside hot. I've been drinking this coffee for like two hours and it's still like perfect drinking temperature. I feel like a genius. Moving on. I'm gonna do unbox it next. Um, things I bought for myself. Yeah, that's fine. This is the, oh, I'll take it out so you can see it. This is the book, basically, of the Lally Lala Lupo the Lamb. And um, this is Lu, whoa, this is Lupo. Which um, knitters, do your hearts just warm a little bit when you look at this lamb? Mine does. I love the tweed. I think I definitely want to make it with some tweed. I like the brown flecks in there. I think it's really sweet. This was a um, main color natural yarn, was a Regia tweed four ply. And uh, the contrast color was a brown in the Regia Uni four ply color N2140. Uh, so if you're looking for the exact same, she will tell you what yarn she used. And I'm trying to think if there's any, oh, golly, I picked up a lot in here. I kind of like how to do instructions, how to do things like that, um, what things should look like. So I don't want to give too much away, obviously paid for pattern, and I did pay good money for it. So um, this is a really exciting thing for me. I had picked two yarns, but I do believe now that I've realize that this is a tweed. I am gonna be changing my mind and doing something with tweed on this lamb. I picked um, the Hawthorne kettle dye in the black color from Knit Picks, which would be fine for the um, arms, head, 
feet. So I could start the feet if I wanted to, but I, I was going to use this, which was a an acrylic yarn with some sparkle in it from AC Moore or Michaels. And I just thought I really wanted a white lamb. But upon further inspection, shall we say, um, I really don't think I want a white lamb. I think I want a natural colored lamb with speckles in it. <laughs> so it's so sweet. Um, right now, just to keep the pattern nice, I have slid everything into a gallon bag. These um, gallon or two gallon bags are really great to just keep your projects nice for a while. And um, that's kind of what I'm trying to do. So until I get a chance to cast this on, it's gonna live in there. Um, I have also purchased the Four Seasons Winter, Woody, Heinz, and Simon which are these three little guys. Woody is the pine cone. Heinz is the deer. Simon is the snowman. So sweet. I really want to make the pine cone to start. And I really like the stag too. The snowman, I think I'll hold off on for a bit, but I think I really like the woodland ones. And then um, I also, uh, the first one that I purchased because I simply I Couldn't not I don't know it was just like once it gets in your head, you know, you're just ruined for a bit um, I got Frank Diego and Brian um, There's a comic called the awkward Yeti and it's about um, This blue Yeti who goes throughout life and he has a lot of friends that are body parts. So there's brain heart stomach, tongue, teeth, and I, it sounds kind of creepy, but it's in a really cute way. So like heart will tell the brain something, you know, like metaphorically we say that, like my heart was saying, my brain was saying, um, you know, your stomach always demanding food or crying after Thanksgiving, your digestive tract not wanting to let anything go. Um, just a lot of really funny jokes. So we always joke that I'm heart and pats the brain and so I really wanted to make a um, modified version of this where um, I'd kind of skip most of the body and I'd bring the brain down to like here and I would do the whole thing in the one color with eyes and um, I would make my own brain and give it to him and I think he would really like that especially on like a shelf some sometime um, he thought the brain was the coolest thing. So that white band, I would actually probably do in red for my zombie. And then I would make that the hunter green and I might do that in black. But this little guy, oh my word, that little guy. That is just so cute. And there's like a little army of them over here. You can get so many great ideas and so many like enabling things on her page and like once again they're not very big so if you're concerned about space um, they say that if I all right try that again on a two millimeter crochet hook and nitpick stroll fingering he would have lost like an inch or two inches in like if he's out here he would have been like there with stroll fingering because it's so much thinner than the hawthorn and um so if you want to make them even smaller you can just pick a thinner yarn weight if you want to make them bigger pick a larger yarn weight um but you want to be able to crochet really tightly so that uh the stuffing cannot come out i've used safety eyes for the babies um because who wants to worry about that uh so i'm putting those down um so <laughs> I ordered this off of Amazon and I did it really quickly and I thought I had the fingering weight bin. I had the DK weight one. So it would work if I were working with my US 2s and a yarn that goes with the US 2. But um, at the moment, I was not. Um, so this is a machine wash, uh, which means I can use it for the crochet things. And it's cotton and wool, which is kind of cute. It's merino wool spun from Australia, and um, 
This is the DK. So I'm gonna use these to make some of those creatures. I don't have a nice hunter green, like a zombie green, should I say? I guess I could use pinup zombie. That'd be a thought. But um, to make another acorn, Erwin the acorn, I thought that this would be a cute combination. Um, or, that's the black, that's the blue. I thought there was a brown. Nope, maybe I'm hallucinating, no brown. This is the only brown in here. So if I used, um, for example, there you go. Like this would be the top and that would be the baby. So um, that's a thought and I think I might play with that this afternoon. I just can't help it. I really want to make the other one for um, Liam and Declam. And then I might actually just do like a short stop motion thing, you know, like, I don't know, something sped up so that it would look like they're moving around. Um, I got this from Best Toy Home on Amazon. I just Googled black safety eyes and they came in lots of colors, lots of sizes. And they're all organized and safe and they're the backings are in another bag downstairs so I actually do want to store them together because obviously one is useless without the other these seem fine so far um, this has been really fun to get and I think that's um, I think that's about everything there so I'll just put that all aside and we'll move into unbox it <laughs> this is handmade with love um, it's from Paradise Fibers, and uh, they are in Spokane, Washington. So, I was um, contacted about unboxing this. Oh my gosh. Unboxing this on the podcast uh, because it's a yarn club box, and I've never had, like, a real... I mean, I've had Molly's Yarn Club, but I've never had, a, like, another yarn club. This is so exciting. So, yarn club! Okay, so... Um, first thing I'm noticing is there's this little teacher tag up here which I love and inside there's a school bus so let's say first off the bat I totally get why they picked me because <laughs> I'm a teacher um gorgeous paper it's coming in okay I've got a newsletter uh paradise fibers yarn knitting club Crochet and Weaving, September 1st. And this is club members only. So this is the back to school. In the box, you're going to find 100 grams of um, a fingering weight yarn, one school bus stitch marker. Ooh, okay. What? Oh my gosh, it smells good. Hold on. Fall just exploded in this box. It smells like um, apple cinnamon oatmeal y'all have or apple cider but like with cinnamon in it like I specifically get cinnamon oh my gosh that's good sugar-free caffeine free cinnamon apple herbal tea bingo um wow that is beautiful a hint of creamy butterscotch in the finishing <gasps> oh talk about wanting to will yourself into fall these are it oh my gosh I gotta get some apple cinnamon tea Oh my gosh, it's like up my nose, but it's so good. <laughs> I fall on my nose. Oh my gosh, okay. So it's this beautiful newsletter that they give you. And they're talking about back to school, their favorite teachers, back to school, oh my gosh. Back to school memories. Oh my gosh, it's called back to school. <sighs> Guys, okay. So um, if I can do this, it's called back to school. So there's the shawl here and um, I'm pretty sure that this is the pattern I got. How stinking gorgeous is that? Oh, I would totally make that. I would 100% make that with black and like pin up zombie. Oh my gosh. Oh, how gorgeous is that? Oh my gosh, what? Or like embers or, oh my gosh. All right, so I got a skein of yarn with this to go, oh my gosh. It's soft. <gasps> it's called School Bus. Oh my gosh. Oh wow. All right, this is the School Bus colorway. It's a Yarn Club exclusive. 100 grams. Ooh, 
Mulberry Silk and Micron Merino. Ooh, so it's soft. 490 yards. That's actually a lot for a skin. That's like 30 extra yards on mine. Um, hand wash, lay flat to dry. Okay. <gasps> Look at that. Oh. You know what? I wouldn't pair this with black. I would pair it with navy blue. What color did they do? It looks like they did black. But I, I can't say that this photo is this yarn. I would actually say it's not this yarn. Um, is there another photo in here? Oh yeah, the testers knit it in different colors. One of them did hot pink. That's really cool. Let's see if I can get this out. One, brilliance, absolute brilliance. I need, I need to make a binder of patterns like this. <gasps> so cool. It's just the sort of shawl that I love. Oh my word. Guys, all right, hold on. Oh my gosh. Oh, can, can the viewers get this shawl? Cause it's, it's awesome. Oh my gosh, the more I look at it, the more I love it. And I'm just gonna turn everything into garter stitch. Cause, you know, you know how I feel about purling. Oh my gosh, all right, so this would take two skeins of Leading Men Fiber Arts in the showcase, shown in neon pencil main color and darkest hour contrast color for the honor roll version. And Prom Queen is the contrast for the Free Spirit. So I'm guessing that this is the honor roll and this one's the Free Spirit. Um, there's German short rows in here, but they do have a show, they're gonna show me how to do that. Um, binding off, slipping stitches, WYIF, WYIB, make one right and left. Yeah, this looks totally doable. Back to school is a shawl knit on a bias using a contrast color to add a graphic edge. For a little extra credit, there are some short row triangles to make a garter stitch chevron stripe. So, um, it looks like the chevron short rows are optional. They're like extra credit. <laughs> Kills me, oh my word. Uh, I can't, I can't even, I'm adoring this. They're stunning. <gasps> this is so pretty. I, I do need that. <laughs> yes, I do, in fact, I do need that quite desperately. Oh my gosh, it's beautiful. I love the black contrast, so now I'm like, rapidly filing through colors that are here that I that I've been saving that I could do um it's absolutely stunning oh my gosh comes with a pencil as well which is um for me usually worn right about there <laughs> um also you'll catch me with it right here <laughs> and then the kids are like why do you have a pencil in your hair because they do I always lose them. This is the school bus colorway and it's stunning. It's by Paradise Fibers. They have yarn clubs. I, you know, not knowing what was going to show up, I'm actually very surprised and um, happy about it. I think the school bus is so cute. It's like the grass and the red from the tail lights, um, the blue on the school bus, the yellow clearly, like just super pretty. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. I would pair this with a navy blue or a gray. I don't know if I'd go all the way to black. I feel like that might make this pale yellow look too pale. Could also look really pretty with green or red. Yeah. Thank you so much for reaching out and asking me if I wanted to review this and, and I, I'm having a blast. This was wonderful. I cannot thank you enough. This is just absolutely gorgeous. Um, if you are interested in yarn club boxes, this could be one for you, Paradise Fibers. And that brings us right into Babel. Uh, this weekend I'm going up to Philly, as I mentioned, so that we have a wedding. Um, one of my old co-workers is getting married. Um, and uh, we're just really excited for them. They came to our wedding, so we're excited to go to theirs. And I am going to be wearing the navy blue lace dress that I wore to Tab's wedding just a few months ago. Um, and I think I'm gonna wear some tan vintage style shoes. And my hair might be similar, 
to this. I'm wearing a, um, a pop on donut type of thing. Um, yeah, I'm getting an itch to wash my hair with the overtone purple again. And I'm trying really, really hard not to because I did just get it blonded out quite recently, like two weeks ago. I don't know what's wrong with me. I have problems. <laughs> I'm a chameleon. If I could be anyone in Harry Potter, I should be Tonks. She can change her hair at will. She can change her face at will. And she's a klutz. Yeah, I'm Tonks. Sadly, I wouldn't make it, but I'm Tonks. Oh, so, um, what else? School has been going well. Um, I had a very horrendous Monday with some of my younger kids. Um, it was bad, it was very bad. Uh, they were just off the wall. I could not rein them back in. It was just horrendous and I came home and I got some pretty yarn and it made my day feel a lot better but I was still very stressed. And then Tuesday, I didn't have them. Yeah, didn't have them, so my Tuesday was fine. My older kids were actually very good on Tuesday. I was very pleased with that. And then I had them again on Thursday and they were light years better. So my week ended on not such a stressful note, which I appreciated. Um, they did get a red X, which is like the worst thing that you could get on your behavior chart. The whole class, the whole class, it was terrible. <laughs> so yeah, uh, that's, that's about where where we're working from. I, let's see, I am petting the couch right now because the suede feels so soft. Um, I am enjoying my latte. I'm enjoying the fact that it's now my weekend. I would like to get a workout in. I did do Girls on the Run twice this week on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, the first one wasn't super workout intensive, so I was a little like, I was very happy to be there and it was a lot of fun for the girls, but I was a little disappointed that I didn't get as much walking, running, doing in as I thought I would. Um, but Thursdays, the exercise that we worked on was choices and the choices that you make. So how some choices are harder than others, like always being truthful, not always easy, especially if the truth that you have to tell the person is not something they want to hear. And um, it's very like, I mean, as an adult idea, that's kind of tough. For kids, they're like, yeah, I could tell the truth. I'm like, oh, that's going to get a lot harder as you get older because the politeness in you is going to make you feel like you can't say that. So it's just, you know, an interesting thing. Or um, choosing to show off your unique personality, which I feel like I've finally grown into. Um, as a grade schooler, I was unique but I felt awkward I felt weird um, I felt excluded for being that way and in high school I felt better about it I found my own niche in theater and art and those were my people as we say and then college my art majors and doing community theater they were my people so I didn't really worry too much about the cool kids because I was having so much fun doing what I wanted to do um, and then getting out of college and um, then, you know, breaking up with a long-term boyfriend, I was like, where am I going to meet people? Like, how am I going to find my people? I wasn't doing theater anymore. And, um, I mean, a large majority of the guys aren't available. And it's just tough. So, um, you know, I, I was lucky. I met Pat. I'm lucky that I fell into such a wonderful life and relationship and everything. Um, but, yeah, so, like, having that that confidence in yourself and making choices in your life that may affect you later on, that kind of thing, like big stuff that they're kind of learning in small increments. So it was run clockwise if you think the choice that you pulled from the basket is easy or counterclockwise if it was hard. Um, and it didn't matter what you thought, like really, like we didn't care if you ran one way or the other. That was a personal choice. Like, do you feel that this decision was easy or hard? So some of the decisions were like, would you rather have cake or pie? And another one was like, would you rather be a president or a superhero? Would you rather um, have a cat or a dog? And some people were like, I want both. <laughs> So they had to do jumping jacks in the middle until everybody came back from the cones. Um, but the longer laps that we were doing all the way around a soccer field, which wasn't very large, but a good size, um, you know, maybe a quarter of a mile around type of thing. Um, and I lapped it 
I think five or six times with the girls. It was hot, it was very hot. And um, running on like grass with the you know unevenness, I definitely felt the sides of my knees and the sides of my ankles being a little more sore and tender than if you're road running where you kind of have flat terrain most of the time. Um, but I burned like 300 calories and I had a great time doing it with them. Uh, I ran their cool down because as a post, you know, pre post ex dance teacher, I don't know, I could still teach dance today if I wanted to. So like, I still consider myself a dance teacher in my heart. Um, but yeah, as, a, as like a dance teacher, I was very familiar with that kind of setup. So I'm like, well, we still have 10 minutes to kill, so to speak, before they were going to go in and start their um, paperwork. They write a goal down each week, and then if we do lap goals, um, they'll write their times on the back too, but we haven't gotten to those yet. Um, I'm interested to see what my lap time is. I want to say I'm a, like a 13 minute mile. Not sure anymore. I'm pretty slow. I got pretty slow. Oh, it hurts my heart. I used to have a nice 11, 11 minute mile. I was very proud of that. It's not very fast, I know. For runners, like a six or seven is fast. And for other runners, like four is fast. But for me, I was very pleased with a 10 to 11. Very pleased. 14, 15, now I'm getting a little sad. Like I wanna go faster. I just wanna do it. I wanna be able to do it. So um, I figured I'd keep you updated here. I'm not going to turn this into a full health channel. Um, I really don't feel like I have the authority to tell you uh, as I struggle so deeply with it myself. But um, knowing that you're not alone and that we're all chugging along on this together is um, good for me. And I'm having a great time with the girls. It ensures that I get at least two workouts in a week. And um, I'd like to try and go do something now. I might do like a weight session or something since I did cardio yesterday. Uh, over the weekend, I might take the dog for a walk before the wedding in the morning um, to get some steps and, and I'll be dancing, so I will get my cardio in that way, I suppose. <laughs> um, I will dance ferociously. <laughs> and um, I'll try to make good choices. I forget what I ordered. I Sometimes I order the healthy thing and then just stare and drool at Pat's steak because that's always what he orders. <laughs> Um, yeah, weddings are tough. They're, like, you can really fill up and overeat and everything's delicious and it's all free and that kind of thing. So, um, yeah, that's, that's my biggest problem. <laughs> uh, but I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a fun wedding. Uh, Tina's birthday, my sister-in-law, is today. And we're going to get her a gift card and I think we're going to have dinner with them on Sunday. All of this I keep hearing, knitting on your socks, knitting on your socks. <laughs> I have been thinking about it and um, I've decided if I can get knitted objects done for the girls this year, great. If I can't, gift cards are also fun. Um, I might make something like an ornament for their trees because they both have their own apartments now. They might have their own little decorating things. So my, my goals have gone down slightly. Um, noticing how long it's taking me to get dad socks done. Haven't even cast on mom or grandmom yet. Um, I've gotten Pat's done and technically I got my done, my Christmas socks done. At least one pair for each of us. Um, but there's more I wanna do and there's more yarn I wanna use this year and the yarn jar yarns I really wanna do and my scrumptious pearl yarns from Samantha I really wanna do. I bought like, um, I think it's incantation and cliff jump or cliff climber or cliff dive from her and they're just all so pretty and I really want to make them um so I like even with a knit along in July I have still not started half the things I wanted to do for Christmas but my mom my grandma and my dad are my priorities right now um because family and my dads are over the heel almost done but um all of a sudden pat swung into view and i'm like ooh, pretty shiny different striping colors my dad's cadet socks are just so boring but i love him and he's super knit worthy 
because he's my dad. <laughs> Even if he doesn't wear anything, he's still super knit worthy because he's my dad. Um, and that's it. <laughs> but my mom, my mom is great. My mom wears my knits a lot and um, my grandma does. She wears nylon stockings underneath them so that they don't wear too much. <laughs> She's so cute. Uh, yeah, so she really likes her, her one pair. Uh, I need to make her another pair. And I think I'm just gonna like pop them in one of the Christmas mailers and give them to her whenever I finish them because why wait? Um, when you're 94, you don't wait. You don't wait. Don't wait for anything. And we are going to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina for, gosh, when is it? The 5th through the 9th? So a few days. Um, and we'll be at, all right, so we'll be in Garden City, South Carolina, technically. It's like a 25 minute drive from Myrtle Beach. Um, and we normally go to, what do they call Broadway at the beach. We go to Broadway at the beach down there. So like that's kind of a driving distance that I'm willing to go type of thing. Um, I have actually never looked for a yarn store down there. Um, I was a knitter uh, for three four summers that we were there, but I was still just kind of doing all of my craft store stuff and it didn't really occur to me to look for a yarn store. Not saying there's gonna be one, but it couldn't hurt to take a gander if there's anything close. Um, yeah, I'll be thinking of Kay while I'm down there because I know I'll be close-ish, like within a state. <laughs> it's a little better, right? Um, but yeah, so it's going to be really fun. Our anniversary is on the 8th. It will be one year married and we're gonna have our, our wedding cake. Um, and I hope to give him a pair of socks. Cause they say never give a pair of socks to a significant other or they'll walk away. Not worried. Not worried at all. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I have been enjoying September. I wish it was cooler. Um, everybody's counting down to Rhinebeck once again. I am not going to be there. I'm so sorry. I really, really wish I could. Um, but I will be in Bethlehem for the Runner's World 5K. And uh, Pat and I are spending the weekend up there to do um, anniversary stuff. We're, we're vacationing with my family for the 5th through the 8th, because they have a condo down there for two weeks. So um, my mom paid our airfare as part of our anniversary gift, and uh, we're taking the dog. We're gonna go to the beach, and it's gonna be fun. But Pat and I took a little time for ourselves as well. So uh, during India Untangled, we're going to arrive up in Bethlehem. We're gonna stay on site for the run. The next morning we can wake up and stretch and kind of rub the sleep out of our eyes. I think the first run doesn't start until maybe 8 or 8.45 in the morning. And um, we are literally five minutes from the start. So we just walk out of the casino and down the little road and boop, right there. So it's going to be very different than having to drive from Philly to Bethlehem at four or five in the morning to make it, you know, one hour or two hours ahead of time for the start. Like it's gonna be much easier. Um, the dog's gonna be in vest and she will be running with us. And then there's also a puppy 5K that I will take the vest off for. And uh, Pat and T I think are gonna run it. I wanted to, I desperately wanted to, but I don't know. I feel like I'm just gonna slow them down and they both can run a really fast mile <laughs> and I'd, I kind of like to see it. So I think the 5K is going to be just enough for me and I will take video footage um, of their running and actually now that I think about it, how cute would it be if I popped the GoPro on T? Right? It would be like the running of the bulls, but the dogs. <laughs> okay, this is something that I think has to happen now. I'm like crying, I'm laughing. <laughs> That's hysterical. It'd be really funny. <laughs> Uh, so I might pop the GoPro on too. Um, also, you know what? I might pop the GoPro in in the bag and maybe we'll have T go on a few runs with us in the mornings. Um, one of my fittest years down in South Carolina, I got up every other day at mm, 6.30, 7 o'clock and would go down and out and run the sidewalk um, from anywhere from three to six miles before like 9 a.m. 
This is my fittest year. I, um, I was feeling very good about it. And uh, I would like to do, I'd like to do three miles. I'd like to do three miles at least maybe twice, three times a week, get to that point. Um, I am building it back up. I know that I have definitely like lost a lot uh, in the whole not running section of my life, which was not fun. I, I like running. I do on like a really sick level. <laughs> I like running. I like medals. I like post-run activities. I like eating without guilt. <laughs> like I like running. I like running. I do. So mm. without further ado, I'm going to wrap this up because I am like 16 minutes of rambling at this point. And uh, I got to go hunt down some ukulele for you. I think we're going to go into Disney again. And then I uh, might crochet myself up a little zombie today because I can. So it's been a pleasure and uh, I hope that your weeks are going well. <sighs> uh, thank you to everyone who bought the kit. They sold out in 11 minutes. Blown away, guys. Um, all of the test skeins that are almost the color but not quite are going to be released under One Hit Wonders. And um, some of them are on an 80-20 base that is Superwash Merino wool and nylon, not the polyamid 8020, just so you know. Um, and they come with like 400 yards. And I will, I'll include whatever I can in the title of the um, Corpse Bride and such. Um, and there are a few um, Halloween Pumpkin King first rounds that I didn't end up going with so I think there's two of those that'll also go in the shop they are not the final ones, so I don't mind showing them to you um, so that'll all be going up and then I will be releasing uh, maybe right after this I'll go hop on I'll go hop on Etsy and um, release the corpse bride yarn because it probably got to everybody by now also um, I will be putting the shop on a small vacation while I'm down in North South Carolina. Um, so probably October 4th through October 10th ish, or maybe a week. I'll take one week to like recap and have the vacation. I just don't want to be receiving orders and unable to do anything about it because I will be so many states away and it would just make me feel better if I know everything's on pause. And when I start it back up again, like, I'm ready. I'm ready for everybody. That's all. Um, so just a little heads up. There'll be a tiny break for um, my anniversary and a tiny break at Christmas. I think starting on my birthday, December 17th, I am going to put the shop on vacation until maybe January 1st, and then I'll be back. Um, so just so you know, uh, Christmas yarns will be going up. Let's go last week in October, first week in November. Um, that will be plenty of time. I usually have about a one week turnaround provided um, that the orders come in earlier than a Friday. Then they have to get dyed the next week, which is still almost a one week turnaround. I dye on Wednesdays and Fridays right now. And I send out on um, Thursdays and Friday afternoons, depending on what's dry from Wednesday. And um, if it doesn't go out Friday afternoon, then the Friday yarn goes out Monday on my way to work. And that's kind of how it rolls for me right now. So um, if you're curious, that's how my life looks. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so 20 minutes in now, I am going to toast you, remind you to take it one cup at a time, no matter how large that cup may be. And I will see you soon. Bye.